two hours before the race I really get concentrated and yeah I'm, I'm very serious in my preparation how to put my bike where to put my shoes and and the courses in my head so yeah I, I have done the race several times in my head so that's my preparation the bike course is excellent it's the best the best course I've seen so far it's going to be really hard uh, and and that's good, I think, so you can get some benefit out of the bike. It's just, it won't be born for sure. The lead pack, including Michaeli Jones, Marie Overby and Mika Suze, battled hard to hold the distance of a minute between the second group. Emma Carney and Natasha Badman tried to narrow the gap and get themselves into contention for the run section as they approached the end of lap one. Back to the action, lap two, with Rusli, the Swiss triathlete, in the lead once again. And about ten athletes in the main group and in the chase pack, who now find themselves exactly one minute, three seconds behind. Steve, it's looking unlikely that Emma Carney's group is able to make a challenge on the leaders. Such a technical course, this, and uh, legal drafting is great, but when it is so hilly, really the drafting pays much less of uh, a major part. Again, a lot of care being taken on these very technical tight turns here. We've already seen one crash. One of the possibly most disappointing competitors to go out of the event, Isabel Baird, the local girl, doing so well in the swim and early sections, picking up a lot of speed on these fast descents. And also down University Hill here, really very tight, not only with the course itself, as you can see, athletes climbing on the other side of the road, but also the motorbikes and cameras getting in very tight on the athletes. This is Emma Carney's chase group, still over a minute behind, still with work to do. Emma Carney trying everything she can to pick up the pace. Again, finding life a little uncomfortable. Back to the leaders, Susan Bartholomew of the United States of America takes them along and keeping at a very steady pace. Both packs continued to battle it out. It was only a question of how much toll the steep hills would take out of each and every one of the riders. Emma Carney, supported by Hoogsard, the European champion, and Badman fought hard to stay in contention. Again, the helicopter shot just shows how difficult these climbs are. Each and every one of the competitors out the saddles. Steve, this is the first time we've seen a test such as this on the Tour this year. Well, I think every race has its uh, different place now in the circuit. And we can see Virginia Beresategui, the 22-year-old Spanish girl who did so well last year. Really a very, very young senior. And she's really trying to push away from McKeeley Jones there in second place. to take you working well but the experience McKeeley Jones just tucked in right behind Marie Overby there in third this is Emma Carney once again looking to be working so hard but making no impression on the leaders she's still trying her best to pull this group along and pick up the pace but Steve as we said earlier in a course as hilly as this you really do need some exceptional riding to challenge the front runners you do need exceptional riding but every shot we've seen has had Emma Carney at the front of that pack well, back to the leaders once again, gathering speed. Isabel Mouton taking them along. Good to see the consistent French rider. Really ever fearless, picking up speed. Steve, what sort of speeds will we see on the bike here? Well, certainly in excess of 80 kilometers an hour. That's uh, 50 miles an hour they'll be coming down the hills. In complete contrast, the chase pack still have it to do. Emma Carney closest to your screens in the blue, trying her best, trying her best to push them along. Badman almost there, and in complete contrast, down in that almost downhill skiing aerodynamic position. As the riders completed the second lap, Chase Group 1 had made no impression on the lead group. Again, the impact of the toughest hill climbs on the ITU Tour so far would play a crucial element on whether the lead group could maintain their one-minute advantage. Natasha Badman tries to make a breakaway. There's the chase group, including Emma Carney, Vika Hoogsart, Jill Newman of the US, also there. 
Interesting to note that it's Badman that's now picking up the pace, not Emma Carney, who's been doing most of the work through these first three laps. Francesca Rusli of Switzerland heads them up in the chase pack, which has the likes of Michaeli Jones amongst them, who has been on the podium in three out of five World Cups. There's Natasha Badman doing her best to try and join the lead group. She's around about one minute, eight seconds behind the leaders. He has work to do. A brave attempt, though, Steve, nonetheless. Oh, Badman's noted for her cycling. She's done so well at duathlon and really made the switch to triathlon looking for the uh, Olympic Games in Sydney 2000. Lead group on the climb once again. They'll come up to the top of the hill around the Bay of Islands. Well, the former European champion, Nancy kemper now takes up front position. Nancy, best result on the tour so far this season, 10th in Sydney. She too now possibly looking to make a breakaway. Looks like Beresategui tucked in right behind her. Again, a good shot of the speed that's been picked up. Very fast indeed. A welcomed rest for the legs, perhaps, on these steep climbs. This is the... Lead group once again, Kemp Arendt. She's been challenged by Marie Overby now. Marie Overby class. Oh, and there's a touch of wheels. And that could have been one of the most dramatic incidents of this competition so far. It's a tough course. Um, I don't think there's a flat section on the bike or the run. So, um, you know, hopefully it'll be a strength course. And um, that's one of my strengths. So, looking forward to it. Emma Carney justifying the strength and depth in World Cup triathlon these days into the fourth and final lap. Berisategui takes them along just behind her, Marie Overby. Marie Overby now recovered from that touch of wheels at over 80 kilometres per hour. That could have been a near disaster. And an indication, Steve, that this one of the most glamorous and exciting sports to enter the Olympics in the year 2000, but a pretty dangerous one at that. Well, we saw an incident at the European Championships last year where Suzanne Nielsen lost so much time and really had to fight her way back on the run. Fortunately, no big accident there, and Beresategui showing great form getting out of the saddle, climbing the hill. Well, we're not seeing great form from Emma Carney, who still seems to be struggling with her top form. Ever impressive on the World Cup last season, ever almost unbeaten throughout the tour, with exception to the World Championships. But here she just doesn't seem to have that strength or that psychological advantage. As we said earlier in this broadcast, there is a rumour that there is a blood disorder, something that is bigger than many of us expect. Nonetheless, we still to see the great Emma Carney back in top position. This is the lead group out of the saddles, climbing University Hill for the fourth and final time before they head into the second transition, leading on to the final 10-kilometre run. Well, we've got this group that have stayed away now. They're over a minute ahead, and we must see the winner, the eventual winner of this ITU World Cup here in Newfoundland, Canada, coming from this group. Very tight turn going round, and really these uh, top ten athletes have got the transition area in their sights, and more importantly, in their minds. Spain, Denmark, Australia, one, two, and three. Beresategui, Overby, and Michele Jones is also there. Well, good news for the Belgium fans as... Nika Sous there goes into third position, no question. Berisategui of Spain takes them along, heading for transition. Despite all predictions, the steep climbs failed to exhaust the athletes as the lead group maintained over a minute's advantage. The chase group had valiantly tried to reduce the deficit, but by transition, it had increased to two minutes. The Cornerbrook Triathlon would all come down to the run and who coped best with the draining bike section. Into the transition for the last time, ahead of the athletes, a 10-kilometer run section. Now, it is Susie Bartholomew from the US. Michaeli Jones is just there. Mika Sue's easily spotted in the red. Fourth position looks to be Christina Hock. No question, Susie Bartholomew for the United States of America, who in the past couple of races are making an ever greater presence on the tour. Again, some tumbling and pushing going on there. Nancy Kemp Arendt is 29 for Luxembourg. There's Michaeli Jones, number five. Six, I should say. Mika Suze is five. A very quick transition. It looks to be for 38. Susie Bartholomew keeping the hopes of the USA alive. It is Susie Bartholomew that heads out on the final 10 kilometer run first for the US. Well, there, the early 
leader of the swim section, Kathleen Smets, who's done well. Just behind Bartholomew is Michaeli Jones. Already looking to close down on the American. Good to see Team USA with Ryan Bolton, another one of their improved athletes on the World Tour, still to go in the men's competition. But just to remind you, tucked into second position and gaining on Susie Bartholomew is Michaeli Jones. Three times out of four World Cup competitions, the Australian has been on the podium. And already starts to stamp her authority on this 10 kilometer. This is a very impressive, a very focused start to this run section for the Aussie, Steve. Michaeli Jones, double world champion, did so well last year after that injury as well. Confirmation of the swim and bike times, 1.32.56 for Bartholomew, then Jones second, who now takes the lead. Mika Sue's third, Rusley and Overby. Well, on to the final section, a 10 kilometer run over an undulating course, once again through the heart of Cornerbrook Town. Emma Carney gets into her familiar stride pattern but finds herself 1 minute 50 seconds behind the leaders, Michaeli Jones, Overby and Berisa Tegi. Once again, Steve, it's unlikely that the defending World Cup champion will make the podium today. Well, it's almost a unique situation for Emma to find herself in this season. She's been so used to closing the gap on the bike and then really taking command on the run. And it's going to be a new learning experience for her, I think. And it's just going to be very, very interesting to see how she copes with that, having to play catch up from a long way back. Well, from left to right, Michaeli Jones in the centre of your screen, Marie Overby on the right, the Spanish number one, Virginia Beresotegui. They're the three battling it out. Sixth and seventh position, Natasha Badman and Pesky of Hungary. But these are the leaders. Black and white on the right of your screens there is Overby. In the centre now is Beresotegui. On the left is Michaeli Jones. And these are the three really looking to pick up the pace, drawing clear from the rest of the field. There's Emma Carney and Emma Carney ambling, struggling not looking anything like the athlete that we saw a year ago dominating the World Cup Tour, clearly yet to find her top fitness. Marie Overby of Denmark still takes them along. Berisa Tegi turns with her. Michaeli Jones, the most experienced of the three, watches on as they drive ahead. Mika Suze looks to be just behind them. Also Isabel Mouton of France there in the red. Then we see Bartholomew of the US. Then Kathleen Smet in the yellow, easily recognised. Did so well in the swim section, now struggling. This is where those tough climbs really do start to take their toll. They really do. He's got a big breakaway now, and uh, interesting, McKeeley Jones choosing to sit there behind the other two. Let them make the pace. Maria Overby, what a beautiful running style. Overby, Beresategi and Jones battled it out at the head of the field. All three athletes forcing the pace as they looked for podium places. Emma Carney did well to battle into sixth position, determined to improve on her poor start to the season. Back to the action, and Michaeli Jones has now picked off Berisa Tegi and Marie Overby and taken the lead on the third lap of four to be contested. There is Mika Suz and Isabel Mouton battling Royal for fourth and fifth position. Mouton of France in the green on the right. Sue's in the red. But there we see Michaeli Jones striding out. With now, we're told, up here in the commentary box, a 17-second advantage, and sensing that this could be her first victory of the season. Michaeli Jones, of course, third in the opening World Cup in Ishigaki. Out of the race in Sydney, third in Zurich, second in Gamagori, the last World Cup of the tour. Here in Newfoundland, looking to go one better now. Emma Carney's having a good run here, Steve. You've been looking at the stats, and she's looking much better than we've seen throughout the season in this closing section. She's such a strong runner, and whatever the condition, she's going to be working her way right the way through. Well, she's left her challenge late. Of course, Emma Carney normally likes to join the leaders by transition from bike to run section. She's left the door wide open, the double world champion of Australia, Michaeli Jones, now USA-based. Really taking full advantage. Once again, Susan Mouton still battling. Overby and Beresategi now find themselves chasing for second and third position. Time to perfection. Michaeli Jones with her first season's victory ahead. 